guys. How are you doing? It's been a while. Yeah, welcome back to my channel. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Toby Daniels. If you are just um, watching this video, um, this is a sort of feedback for everybody who sponsored the 1000 Tongues project that happened on the 28th of March, 2019. 19? What am I talking about? Hello guys, what's up? My name is Toby Daniels. In case you're watching this video, this is a feedback for everyone. Take three. Hello guys, welcome back to... Hello, my name is Toby Daniels and I'm the facilitator of the 1000 Tongues project and I'm super excited to be sharing this with you right now. So this is a feedback to everyone who donated um, towards the 1000 Tongues project. You guys made it happen and I'm super excited that it happened. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. Thank you for um, putting out your money. Thank you for coming out, supporting. A lot of volunteers, you know, reached out to me, about 70 people. And we had about 16 people come out on the day of the event. I totally understand. COVID-19 had everybody indoors and it's totally acceptable, right? However, it happened, right? That's the, that's the good news. It happened. And I'm super excited it did. And, um, well, this video is just to show you some of the things that happened behind the scenes, right? But before we do that, I'd like to thank some people who donated to um, the 1000 Tongues Project. I'd like to thank Ozos. Man, Ozos, you are amazing. If you're watching this right now, I need you to know that you are amazing. I follow your page every time and your page is awesome. Your cooking is great. You need to teach me your culinary skills. You're amazing, really. You are. Thank you for donating. Thank you so much. Ozos donated a huge amount of money. I'm not going to mention how much it was, but it was a huge amount of money. Thank you so much. God bless you. Follow at Kitchen Butterfly on Instagram. Ozos has the best page on Instagram when it comes to food. Nigerian cuisines. Guys, you would love her. You would. Because I do. I do love her right the next person i want to say hi to is my brother from another mother deji he surprised me well i shouldn't be calling you <laughs> deji but i know you're my big brother but i really i really thank you for the support you did amazingly good and i'm super duper grateful thank you so much god bless you i want to say thank you to everyone alex alex you are amazing alex you know this alex you do you know this, you are amazing. Alex is a wonderful person. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to everyone. Josh, Josh is my main man. Josh, I love you, man. Josh went with me everywhere. We went to the market together to get the goods we needed. You know, Josh was there from day one till the end. I love you, G. I love you. Thank you, Lola. Thank you, Lola Jen. You did amazingly well. Thank you so much. God bless you. Lola, I call you the superwoman for a reason. You are amazing. Thank you so much. If you're watching this right now, you are amazing. Thank you so much, Jenny. Jenny, you are amazing. Jennifer, you are amazing. Thank you, Benita. Benita, you did amazingly well. Let me just say about Benita. Benita did not know me from anywhere, but I re she reached out to me and it was, it was just amazing from there because she started referring people. She started telling me things to do, you know, give me you know, instructions and I had, to, I had to follow them because, you know, you want to get things done. But anyways, I'm really grateful for the fact that you came into my life at that particular point in time. I'm super excited that you recognized that fact and then you were on board to make things happen. I'm so grateful. I'm super grateful. I also want to say thank you to Flora. I'm not going to mention your name, but baby, you did well. Those sleepless nights, those nights I was worried you were there to say, babe, it's going to work out. It's going to be this, it's going to be that. I'm super thankful. I can't wait to show you to the world, by the way. I'm super grateful for you. Yeah, so um, guys, it was a wonderful journey. You know, we had to go to the market to um, get the cow, you know, which was really, really daunting. That was my first time buying a cow. And man, that stuff was really tasking, trying to, you know, beat down the bargain and all of that. Um, we had to go to the market to get all the stuff we needed. I was super stressed. I had sleepless nights, right? 
we have to cook overnight, right? And guys, cooking is one thing, packing the food is another, right? We packed over 1,400, you know, um, packages of food and it was, it was really, really tasking. And I just wanted to mention this quickly, that the fact that I did this was not by my power. It was an instruction I had to follow, right? And it started out in January, actually, when God told me to do that. And I didn't have the funds to do that. I didn't have money in my bank account to pull that up. And God said, put that in your calendar and start. Put, put the news you know, out there and let people know about it. And that was exactly what I did. And um, about a month to the event, we didn't have enough funds. And it was getting really, really frustrating and tiring. But God said, hold on, right? I mean, I told you to do this, I would provide. And God did. Somewhere along the line, God said, um, the reason why I need you to do this is because it would be a light to other people, right? This was in January 2020. COVID was not a big reality in Nigeria then. And a lot of people were not really passionate about, you know, giving food to people. I didn't even think about COVID. What I thought about was giving food to people on the streets, you know, the homeless, you know, the beggars by the roadside. That was the intention, right? And God said, do that and it's going to be a light for other people, you know, to see and that would spoil them to do the same. And that was exactly what happened, guys. Just a week after that, I saw I saw other websites popping up. I saw um, social media handles popping up. People were doing the same thing. And it was just mind blowing to see that God really used what we did, you know, to spur other people to action, right? Now, I'm not taking all the credit for all the good work out there. I'm not doing that. But what I'm saying is I was not alone. I was not the only one doing that at that particular point in time. I was not the only one who had the idea, right? Because it's easy for you to take all the credit and all of that. But God was telling me, this is a light for other people to see, right? And even people, after that, people reached out to me and they were like, um, they don't have much, but they would like to, you know, donate a certain amount of money or donate this, donate that. And it was just really good. It was just really good that that happened. I was really humbled. I was glad at the fact that God actually used us to feed 1,400 people, right? It was super humbling and amazing. The 1,000 Tons project will happen twice in a year, right? One is going to be in March and the other is going to be in December. Now, I wish we could do this every time, right? But I just like to give everyone a breathing space and also make this um, something to look forward to so it doesn't lose its value. I know good is not supposed to lose its value. I mean, good should be done every time, right? But um, we just want to make it substantial so that we do this at a time, you know, we have a lot of impact. We do this another time and we have a lot of impact also. So that is the goal. So the next one will be in December. We do not know when the date is. But I'll surely let you know, right? And I also want to make a big shout out to Isaac Success. Isaac Success is doing something great in Ajegunle. Guys, you guys should watch out for... Um, I'm going to just put this social media handle on the screen right now. I do not know. I do not remember the social media handle, but I'm going to put it on the screen right now so you see it. So um, I'd like you to reach out to him, support him in any way you can, you know, if you have anything you want to donate, you know, you could reach out to me. I'll help you reach out to him and then I'll pass the information across to you in case you cannot get directly to him. But it's really doing something great and I think you should be part of it. You know, be part of anything good happening out there. Reach out to people, feed people. A lot of people are going through tough times right now and they need help, right? It's not going to hurt you to give out the little you can. No matter how small, do something for people out there. I think that the little good we put out there is a seed of hope, you know, a seed of hope, especially um, in the lives of the young generation, because what we do now matters. What we do now will be memories for them to hold on to. And someday it will be at the back of their mind, it will be in their history that somebody did this for them. Somebody made them see the better in people. Right. And that is that is part of what matters, really. Let's do good. Let's put good out there. Let's sow a seed of hope, you know. When I was planning to do this project back in March, one of the things God told me was that um, this was going to be a seed of hope, right? In the lives of the younger generation. Because my, my project was particularly about kids. And God was saying um, that was going to be a seed of hope in their lives, right? 
it seemed really strange to me. I said, how was a piece of me going to be a, a seed of hope? Like, that's the only thing we could afford. How could it be a seed of hope? But God said, leave the work to me. I will touch their heart, you know. And that is what love does. A little, a little act of love can mean so much to someone else. And it can make them see themselves in a better light and also think to be better themselves and also think to do better. You know, for other people, you know, aside from themselves, you know, so it's it's just um, it's really really imperative that we you know put our good out there. Let's change the world. You know, the shirt I'm wearing right now says, "Hope is alive. Hope is really alive, guys. Hope is really alive." And we need to let the world know that we need to put so much good out there. I can't say this enough. We need to um, love people regardless of religion regardless of you know tribalism regardless of um colorism regardless of all of that you know we need to love people love humans because you know god loves them too we need to start seeing people the way god sees them you know and that should spur us to action that should spur mm-hmm. us to want to do better we shouldn't think so much about ourselves yeah We should um, reach out to people, do good. We should.
That you cannot do. Everybody say I can do anything. Put your hand on your chest and say I can do anything. Wash your hands with soap and water. Now the third thing, say God loves me so much. God loves me so much. God loves me so much.
Okay, so I'd like to talk about faith and how faith actually helped me, you know, pull through with this because I didn't have the funds to start with and God was telling me to pull through. I'm going to be very honest. I was at my lowest at that point in time in March. I mean, in January, I just got off my job um, the year before and I was still trying to get on my feet, you know. I had not much money in my account, you know, everywhere was pretty bleak and things seemed like um, they were not working and um, God told me to pull through regardless you know and put this out there and I did that you know was even devastating the fact that I put so much hope in some people I thought they would come through you know for sure but they did not and that really actually helped me to know that um, when you have something in mind to do the best bet really is to depend on God, you know, and um, have a lot of boldness and courage in yourself and what God would do on your behalf, right? Just make sure you have a good heart and um, pull through regardless, right? God will come through for you if you depend on God, right? And most times, even if you don't depend on God, somehow if God really wants to show himself strong, he will show himself strong regardless of your shenanigans, right? And um, guys, I just wanted to say that faith actually helped me pull through um, in that project. I couldn't have done it by myself because I had no one. I had no one, right? I had no one. I could say that um, 90% of the people on that project were people I did not know from Adam, right? I did not know any one of them from anywhere. They just reached out to me and they were like, they they would like to be part of this, you know? And one other thing that was really, really, um, it was really, really amazing and inspiring was when the law against social social gathering started. It was quite tough to pull out that, you know, stunt <laughs> because now you couldn't gather people, you know, to do whatever you want, you wanted to do. So how would you, how would you do that? And God said, that is not going to stop me, right? God said what you needed to do was cancel all the plans you had and then all of you become food soldiers, right? And what, when, I, when I mean food soldiers, what I mean is um, God said we should move from house to house, right? That was crazy to me. How would you, because we had three locations in mind, how are we supposed to go to three um, geographical locations in Lagos and then go to, from house to house? That was, that was a terrible idea, I thought. You know, but that was what we did. But uh, prior to that, the plan we had was to go to each community and then gather the people on a large playground or in an open space, you know, have conversations with the people, have some speakers come talk to them, especially kids, and then share the food we had with us after that. You know, that was the plan, right? But federal government said, don't gather anywhere. And we couldn't. So we had to move from house to house. And um, I can tell you for a fact that that was more impactful than 
um, the, the large gatherings we were supposed to do because we went from home to home and people really felt appreciated, right? People really felt loved. And I was glad at the opportunity I had to actually reach out to young kids, you know, reach out to people in their teens. I was really, really glad because, you know, I, I wish somebody did that for me when I was, when I was really young, you know, I'm not saying I had a really tough when I was growing up, but what I'm trying to say is I wish somebody showed me an act of kindness, you know, like that, you know, just for no reason. You know, many people that showed me kindness when I was young, there were people I knew, but I, I wish somebody who I didn't know just came up to me and did something good that I would appreciate. Of course, some people turned us down, you know, because they probably thought we had ulterior motives for sharing food and all of that but still a lot of people actually you know gave positive responses to our project and that was really amazing it was really it felt really good it felt really good it felt super duper good so um I, i'd like to say a big thank you to aunt jane and jane i'm not sure if you're watching this right now but if you are you need to know that you are amazing. I didn't know Aunt Jane from anywhere. I couldn't cook in my house. I couldn't cook for 1,400 people in my house. We needed a large space, right? And I met Aunt Jane through Benita. Now, I didn't know Benita from Adam. Benita introduced me to Aunt Jane. And Aunt Jane opened up her house to me, a stranger. And it was humbling to know that somebody who, someone I didn't know from anywhere, you know, could accept me and what I wanted to do and support me all the way, you know, it was, it was mind blowing. She gave us a, a full support. I was really, really humbled. Anjin, thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. I'm really grateful from the bottom of my heart right now. Thank you so much. I want to say a lot of thanks to everyone who was part of that project. I can't start mentioning a lot of names because, you know, time would run out really, but I'm super grateful if you were a part of it. You made that vision a reality and I'm super grateful for it. Thank you so much. God bless you. I want to make a special shout out to Josh. Josh, the chef. Josh was amazing. You are amazing, man. You're amazing. I didn't know Josh from anywhere. He reached out to me and he said he wanted to be a part of this. He saw the ad I, I put up on Instagram and Josh said, I'd love to be a part of it. I'm a chef. You know, I could do this. I could do that. And I said, okay, let's work together. And Josh gave me his full support, right? We went everywhere together. We went to the market together. We went pricing things together. We did everything together throughout that um, timeline. You know, we... Man, Josh, I can't thank you enough. You know, I really stressed Josh. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I really did. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. God bless you. And um, Esther, I remember you, Esther. I'm not going to forget your name. Esther was part of the people in the kitchen. Okay, so I'm just going to mention the people in the kitchen, right? And, um, I had Esther in the kitchen. I had Josh in the kitchen. I had Lola Jane in the kitchen. I had myself in the kitchen because sometimes I could be a chef, you know. <laughs> and and um, who else did I have in the kitchen? Yeah, Benita came into the kitchen at some point. <laughs> well, it's all right that he came in at some point. Um, and Casey came into the kitchen at some point. And Casey, thank you so much for coming. You were amazing too. Thank you. God bless you. You know, these people were amazing. They, they stood up, you know. They were there, you know, overnight when we were cooking and packing stuff and all of that. It was just, it was really tasking, guys. But I'm glad that we did that. And I'm glad that I had you guys support. You guys really made this something. Fisayo, I remember you, Fisayo. You did amazing. You did amazingly well. Fisayo helped us with the bosses. You know, she helped us call, make some calls. You know, people came through and, um, you know, was grateful for everyone who was a part of that project. A big shout out to Fido, you know, he came out um, to help us shoot some content, you know, for the project. Um, a big shout out to Media Airlines, you know, Jagade came through. Jagade, you were amazing. Thank you so much, man. You were amazing. A big shout out to Kelani, Toby Kelani. Toby Kelani is my friend and brother. 
You did amazingly well, Toby. Thank you so much. Um, man, it was good. God is good. And I just wanted to say, if you want to do good, do not hesitate. Because you do not have to um, have the means to do good. Just intend to do good. And the means will come. Trust me, the means will always come. The means is never an excuse, right? The will is what is most important. The will to do good. If you have the will to do good, the means will come. One way or another, if people see that crystallized will to do good, people will come through for you. And I just want to say that you have to pull through regardless, you know. Um, thank you so much, guys. I think this is where I draw the curtain. And um, follow on social media on Instagram at uh, 1K Tongues, 1K Tongues, on Twitter at 1K Tongues, on Facebook also at 1K Tongues, and you can follow me on Instagram at Toby Daniels underscore, you know, and Twitter at Facebook to everywhere, Toby Daniels underscore. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Love you. God bless. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.